We are back in Planet Zoo today and we're doing a video building in New Tropic Zoo. We're going to be creating a lovely little habitat for a lovely little animal, the aardvark. That's right, this is episode two. In episode one, we built the entrance of New Tropic Zoo, a modern zoo based in the grasslands of Africa. And now it was time to create our first habitat. But first, a little show you around here. I created this information desk, very simple, but very effective with the same theme as the entrance. But in today's video, our very first animal is being put in the zoo. We're gonna be creating our very first habitat. And we're gonna start off with creating one of the custom walls for the hard shelter. I say it all the time, once you've got one piece, you've, you've got them all. So I thought I'll start off with the um, the custom hard shelter slash backstage area. So this is where our animals are gonna get some shelter away from our guest viewing area. And where our zookeepers can go in and if they need to, and our vets need to get in there and do some maintenance on the animals. Obviously, if you're new, this is a sandbox zoo, that rhymed that. If you're new around here to this episode, then this is a sandbox zoo based in the grasslands of Africa and we're going to go with a tropical theme it's going to be very modern and the aim of this zoo for me is to try to get as much detail in smaller habitats as I can not everything has to be massive big spectacular with massive high ticket animals I wanted to do a smaller zoo um, I'm probably going to have about 10 to 15 animals so not that small but they are going to be smaller animals so that means smaller habitats and yeah, I just really wanted to demonstrate on what you can do with small spaces. And it's all in the detailing, it really is. So you will see this a lot of pieces put into these builds. This is obviously episode two. If you want to watch episode one of me creating um, the entrance way, then you can do. I've actually created a playlist, so you can jump on there and catch up with, with this zoo, the new Tropic Zoo builds, whenever you please, really. Um, just finishing off this custom, um, this custom, not really, this is custom roof then, custom wall, and then again, like I said, all you have to do is duplicate it over, select it all, duplicate it over, and we've got it. I put one to the side just so I save it for later, and then I thought, shit, I need to create a doorway. So that was probably the annoying part, I needed to create a doorway with the same theme and make sure everything is lined up, which actually took quite a while but i do kind of like this theme of building it's got like um plaster pieces at the bottom what kind of like tiles don't they kind of like masonry tile bricks would you say lined up making it look realistic and then a little trim with the conservation pieces and then conservation pieces on an angle as like wood um, paneling um, I actually learned this trick from Caesar Creates. I've credited him in other stuff I've built. I take a lot of, well, not a lot of inspiration. I take some, I won't, I won't give him that much credit, but I take some inspiration from him because his builds are incredible. Go and check him out on YouTube. That's Caesar Creates if you've not done already. Just trying to figure out everything now and trying to li line these up. We did prove a little bit more difficult than I originally thought it would do. Um, yeah, so today we're creating a habitat for the aardvark. Now, I've not actually created a habitat for this animal for a while. Because what seems to happen, especially if you're a content creator uh, who plays Planet Zoo like I do, and it's all about making videos, it's all about the new animals. The new animals come out in a new pack, and it's all about building a habitat for each one of those animals. Because that's what's trending in Planet Zoo at the, at the moment. So it's quite nice to try to think about animals I actually want to build habitats for, if that makes sense, and having the freedom to create smaller habitats for smaller animals. We're creating this doorway now and this doorway is pretty much finished, just need to add some trim. We recolored the actual trim to a darker colour, just thought it looked better in contrast to the actual conservation pieces. Adding the actual doorway, so this doorway is where, we're going to have two different doorways. The doorway where our, um, our zoo staff is going to go to get to our animals and we're going to have the doorway where the actual habitat gate is going to be located. Once I add all the building pieces separate, and in place like you can see here with different variants as well as the doorway and an upper variant it was just time to move everything together all you have to do is select everything like this and move everything into place exactly how you want it so let's start doing that um very easy once you've got one piece I, i've just said it then if you've got one piece you've got every piece just duplicate it over or move it over i like to keep spurs that's why you see me just picking from the other side where the other walls are and just line it up how you want it and then once everything is lined up all you have to do is start making sure everything's level and then start adding your trim 
What the trim basically does is just get rid of those jagged edges, make everything look more realistic. This is kind of thing you would see on, on the ends of buildings, kind of like support structure, support the structure, isn't it? Um, just sliding them in, I've used the same conservation pieces once again, same color, keeping the same theme. This little doorway here, this is going to be the doorway what um, the animals themselves can go from the hard shell to inside to out the outside viewing area. We're going to add a mesh fence as well to make it look more realistic and make it look like the animals can get a little bit of privacy when they want and our zookeepers can close off this area to keep the animals inside whether they need to do any veterinary work or anything like that all right talking about roofs if you've watched my entrance build you will understand how i do this roof i just add the on the grid plaster piece off the grid plaster piece on top of it on the grid plaster piece and then just duplicate it over making sure it's got a lovely little overhang and that's me just testing how the roof would look I'll, I'll, I'll delete the, the roof and we redo it i just wanted to see how the color scheme would work and if it would work and it does work that was a lot of works in that sentence <laughs> we add in the floor in the exact same situation and actually separate it from the grid and then add it what well, we'll do that later because this was so time consuming this what you can see me doing here i'm basically trying to right bear with me here i'm trying to line this hard shelter up with the on the grid pieces of the path what we've already placed at the entrance i couldn't add it to the same grid because it just wasn't working it just because it was already on a separate grid it was just too much hard work to put it on all on the same grid so i went on a different grid system but aligned with the old grid system I just want everything square and easy to do, especially when we do the outside barriers and planters and stuff like that. I just wanted everything aligned. Everything is not going to be square and aligned in the future habitats. I'm going to have a more floral and more circular designs and stuff like that. But for this first habitat, this is how I wanted it quite simple. And once everything was aligned, it was time to move on to the custom gates. We don't want to use the in-game barriers, do we? We want to use a null barrier and like I do with all my builds really and create a custom barrier for ourselves so it looks better and it is more high detail so we'll go in the mesh pieces of course I love the mesh pieces just work so versatile work with everything and then of course we're going with the same exact conservation pieces you're going to see a lot of these conservation beams and this color in this suit um, lowering it down I wanted a little gap at the bottom so it looks like things can go under and the gate can be moved if need be um, and then again just to add to realism a little trim on the actual mesh itself make sure it's not just digged into the wood it looks like it is an actual gate buried in the wood i hope that makes sense and it just makes everything look better as well don't it so like i've always said and i've just said about six thousand times previously once you've got one side you've got them all once i've created this one barrier i've got the whole barrier for the whole of the habitat Anna. all i have to do is duplicate it and move it around the habitat as i please and i was really happy with it so just playing about with it now and trying to think how it looks against the actual hard shelter before we actually start placing it around the habitat itself so we've got those gates we can put those to one side at the moment before we start building that it's time to line everything up because remember i did line everything up with two different building groups so i can easily add the floor this is why i did it it just joins nicely onto the floor that we've already got where the entrance is obviously we've got the plaster pieces at the bottom where the animals are going to go into the hard shelter and then we're carrying on with the same wood around the outside of where our paths will actually be and then i realized it was actually too far left what I always say, if something's wrong, change it. If you're not happy with something, change it. Deal with it. Just don't get frustrated and then click off planet zoo thinking, oh, no, play. I've, I've been there, I've done that. Patience and perseverance does prevail, one of my famous sayings. Um, yeah, so there we go. We've lined everything up. The uh, wood pieces, this boardwalk. I do play around with different ideas. I ended up deleting most of the boardwalk and, and taking over with the actual in-game paths. So I just thought it looked better. But you can see me here just adding planters to the side of the building. This is going to separate some of the barrier up as well. Instead of just having a square barrier, what we created, this custom barrier all the way around. I wanted different kind of rock faces and different planters. You can see me just building one of those rock faces. Now, again, using the four rocks. I am actually, at this point, I'm obsessed with the four rocks. I really am. I think they are amazing. We do recolor them to the same color as the Savannah rocks, though, because we are building in the Africa grassland, aren't we? So I wanted it the same color as either desert or savannah and you know that kind of biome so we do end up doing that adding another little planter there again to break the barrier up and then um, now we're in down on our filters the grassland plants and just putting some plants in where we want it we're going to add mulch to those planters 
because it should add much to every planter really, it just makes everything look better. And then adding a little bit of foliage here, digging those trees into the ground and making it look like a bush, good tip there. Um, I've got a, a, a tutorial on that actually, a tutorial on foliage and rock work, it was one of my last videos quite recently. So go and watch it if you're not already and you do struggle with rocks and foliage, which a lot of people seem to do. I actually am surprised a lot of people do ask me about rocks and foliage work. And, so I don't want to sound big headed or anything, but it's one of the easiest things in Planet Zoo for me because you can't really go wrong, just play stuff and it'll just look natural. Right, barrier for the barrier. <laughs> I wanted kind of like a separation between the guest and the barrier so you can't get, you know, the little guest poking their hands over the barrier and getting the hand chewed off, off an, 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 any animals. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Not that aardvacs are going to chew your hand off, but. I'm sure you understand what I mean. So I wanted to create a little barrier here. Do that with, again, the four rocks, but the pebble types are four rocks. We're going to keep these the same colours, add a little bit of foliage, which you can see me doing now. Um, it just, yeah, it just gives it that more realistic atmosphere as well. You wouldn't be able to go up to a to a habitat gate in a zoo and just stick your hand through the gate, would you? There was have some kind of barrier, whether it be like a metal barrier, wooden barrier, or kind of like a natural path barrier, like you can see me creating here. So just duplicating that over now, once you've got one side, you've got you've got another. You're probably sick of me saying that in, in this video, aren't you? But it's so true, it is really so true. Work smart, not hard, folks. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Right, adding the little bit of foliage here, looking back, and then I thought, right, what can I do with this foliage? And I thought, oh, that tree looks good. And then I thought, oh, but these look even better. Layering these out is one of my favorite things to do to make it look like a bush putting a sum on an angle and then just duplicating them over and then you've got like a full planter of of like a tropical bush you can't actually tell that the trees i just think they look really well and they kind of overhang the side of the actual plaster pieces as well it's just just to give it that look that you know there's some are falling down and some are hanging hanging over them and a bit overgrown not maintained i love it i love it and towards the end, this is how it came out looking once the main barriers were in. I just got that right hand side to do, which is easily done. All I have to do is select one of the panels what I've already grouped. Oh, I've put a little gate here as well. I just thought it looked pretty neat having a little gate. And this is something what you would have as well. It's like a separate gate for our zookeepers. Just lining this up now from the other side. I've already duplicated three together, which is really handy. And then just to measure the actual gap of the, um, the two separate barriers, uh, do you know do you know where the rock for the four rock pebbles are i just used this piece and just put the grid down to two meters and then just lined it up and then deleted the on the grid piece and then i've got everything perfectly lined up with a two meter gap between path and barrier just a little neat trick what i've naturally used before just a matter of duplicating duplicate can't speak now Speaking that long in this uh, in this um, voiceover that I can't speak, but just duplicating these over and moving these on along. Over at the front, I created another little barrier. Exact same barrier, but just a smaller version. This is like a mini-me version, isn't it? Just lining them up. So, and this is where our main guest viewing area will be. And then I created kind of this little overhanging canopy area with provides a little bit of shade, not just for the animals, but for the guest in the viewing area as well and was really happy with it you see me just adjusting things and lining things up again with the conservation pieces acting as beams and this lovely fabric um i think this is in the india theme could be wrong but I just it just thought it looked really well and worked really well with this habitat and then of course we cannot forget the actual education pieces so our guests are getting the best education that they need when in a zoo even though we're playing on sandbox i still want to have everything the way it should be that makes sense so again we used a small conservation pieces this time with the education screen and just lining everything up giving it a little trim looks like it's kind of like freestanding in the rocks and then just add everything together and we're going to duplicate it over and have it in the middle instead of on the left and then adding a speaker to the rear for even more education Back onto the front of the actual hard shelter and it was time to create a door. Well, two doors in fact. I'm going to create a door here. It's not functional, but this is going to hide the habitat gates where your animals will be delivered into your habitat and out of your habitat. Again, with the conservation pieces, I added up black trim as well, so it looks like metal. I did that a lot in the start of the, the series in the, in the entrance build, so I thought I'd carry it over. It looks like metal, doesn't it, really well? And then just really recolouring some of the pieces, make it actually look like a gate. But yeah, that's where our um, habitat gate will be. 
but then we had to add the details again we saw we added this kind of like door stop here not door stop sorry door handle that's the word I'm really mixing my words up in this video so i do apologize i don't know what's coming over me lately maybe i'm just tired yeah adding this door handle custom made door handle make sure we have one on the other side and it's a, a replica of the front the same to the back and then putting the actual habitat gate in now line up as best as possible change everything to null so we can wrap a null barrier adding the path on the inside of connecting the path to the habitat gate and then to the custom made gate here and again we're going with the mesh pieces obviously this is not functional i wish they would have moving functional gates in planet 2 i really do i don't think it'd be that difficult for frontier to implement either i mean we've got the moving wheel we've got the habitat gate what opens and shuts when the two keepers use it so can we have just some like up and down moving gates what we can put on entrances as hard shelters like this please planet zoo i'd love that well for now we're going to create our own again with the mesh pieces and the same metal pieces that we've used throughout the build and then we're going to add a switch because we're going to need to be able to actually switch this gate. So we don't want a manual gate, we want an electronic gate which can go up and down. Fast forward a little bit and on the inside I've created again this lovely little gate using the conservation pieces, mesh pieces and you guessed it, plaster pieces. And the, these two separate gates here so it looks like our zookeepers can actually get in the inside of the inside of the habitat. Right, let's spruce this area up. And with the power of editing, ta-da! We've got a backstage area. I've created a tutorial on backstage area, so I didn't really want to show it. You probably all know now. Just use a lot of the conservation pieces out of the conservation pack. We've got vents. We've got a little trim. We've got the bedding in. And I'm just going to finish off this window now. All we have to do is duplicate it over once we've created this one side. And then we'll have a window as well. I just thought it looked all plain just with the plaster pieces. I want to separate it a little bit. So I added a trim to the bottom of the inside area. And added this window, of course. Put a little bars as well so it looks like it protects the animals from smashing the window. And there we've got... God, there we go. There we go, I meant to say. We've got a fully functional um, indoor area, haven't we? And now we need to re-add that roof so again and on the grid piece and a plaster piece and then just duplicate that over make sure you would you lower your grid size down to one if you want an overhang like see me doing here and just duplicate that over all the way around like so filling in all the gaps and deleting all the on the on the grid pieces just get rid of them delete them we don't need them now do we? we want a thinner roof we don't want a really thick roof do we and here we are. I've actually just put the animals in, but let's give them a little bit of foliage, shall we? Boom. Just simple foliage, some buffalo grass and some rocks. They actually don't need a lot, these animals. Let's take a closer look. They have got everything they need and they're in a beautiful home. So why wouldn't they be happy? I'm so happy with this viewing area. It gives our guest an amazing experience when viewing into this habitat. In fact, some of them have just run up to view them now. We've got inside looking good and accessible to our zookeepers. And from the top, this is what it looks like. I'm actually really happy with it. You'll see I've just got like a random pool of water here and God knows what's going on here. But that'll probably be in the next episode of New Tropic Zoo. I've got some gap filling to do and I need to build a food court. So that was the idea behind this. But I don't know where I'm going with it yet. With just the entrance and one habitat done, the guests are piling in now and New Tropic Zoo is starting to form into an actual zoo. But with that being said, that concludes to the end of this video and this episode of New Tropic Zoo. My name's Adam. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be episode three of New Tropic Zoo, and I will catch you in the next Planet Zoo video.